Hi everybody, Simon Whiteley here. This is just a quick fun video to talk about a recent screw up I had on a webinar and how I analysed it using the cast accident analysis method and what I learned from that analysis and I wanted to share that with you. It's a bit of a silly example, a bit of fun, but it helps I'm hoping to highlight the key, key learning points and how this method is very, very powerful. So, first off I'd like to talk about, you know, this is the control structure that I've created. It looks really complicated for this particular topic, but essentially what happened is, uh, this is me, and uh, I wanted to communicate my message to some attendees at the webinar, and part of that communication, the whole point of that communication, was to update the attendees' control algorithm and mental model. So the message I was passing, the things I was talking about, I was hoping to update them and basically train them, learn something new. Now to abstract the control structure again, there's me, there's the webinar, so I'm communicating via the medium of a webinar and the attendee is interacting with that webinar to update their control algorithm and mental model. And then I've abstracted it again just to sort of, you know, this diagram's basically got four, you know, bonus control, control structures, four control structures in one. So there's the primary high level abstract control structure, a little bit more detailed control structure, a third, even more detailed control structure, and then the main control structure that I've actually analyzed and we'll talk about in detail. So this one here, from an engineering perspective, if you're an engineer, this, this will make more sense. So I interact with some hardware, you know, my computer. It interacts with some software, which interacts with some data. And that data is transmitted across the internet in some shape or form through these three areas and it arrives on the computer of the attendee and they interact with that hardware and they get the webinar training. They get the information they want. They can ask questions and get feedback. Now just zooming out a bit more then. So let's abstract that again. So just ignore this information in the middle. Let's focus on this outside part. So this is the control structure. So I interact with uh, my computer through a keyboard and mouse which interacts with, in this case, the GoToWebinar software. So that's the software I use for my webinars. And then the GoToWebinar software interacts across the internet with the attendees' GoToWebinar software on their computer or their mobile phone or whatever device it is. And then that provides information to them via the speakers. So audio feedback, the display, so visual feedback, and then they can use their keyboard and mouse, or depending on what device they're using, to provide feedback to the GoToWebinar software, and then obviously through to my computer, my software, and then that provides that through to the display so that I can see you know, what they've said or any feedback you know, that they've typed. And then obviously I communicate through the GoToWebinar software using a microphone. So this is a voice communication which will come out of the speakers over here. And then obviously I have my presentation, so the presentation I've put together, so that's there. Now inside that presentation I've handily included a couple of slides on how to use GoToWebinar software. And essentially the reason that that's there is so that the attendee, the control algorithm and mental model of the attendee is updated so that they know how to use the software and importantly they can then provide me with feedback so that I know that they can hear me and that they, you know, they can ask questions and things like that. So what actually happened in this particular event then? So I, uh, as a bit, of a, a bit of a human that does human things, I, uh, <laughs> in setting up the webinar, I muted the microphone. So I set the software to mute the microphone so that when I'm getting ready, having a drink, you know, doing my la 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 la, getting ready, preparing myself for a webinar, ready to press the live button, go live, um, I put it on mute so that they couldn't hear me. But after I'd pressed go live, um, it transpires I didn't unmute it. So I persisted for 10 minutes whilst it was muted, talking to myself quite happily and nobody could hear me, which is obviously really, really bad and really annoying. So, um, as I said, I use, I included a part of my presentation to tell everyone how to use GoToWebinar so that in the event that they couldn't hear me then they'd be able to tell me and I would know and then if I was muted I could unmute it and I included what's called a poll and it was basically a can you hear me yes or no 
and everybody pressed no or 90 percent of people said no we can't hear you but for whatever reason i thought that 90 percent had said yes we can hear you and so i proceeded proceeded to talk uh, thinking that everyone could hear me except for those small number of people so i i just presumed that you know if only 10 percent of people can't hear me it's because the people themselves must have a problem with say their speakers and so obviously i said you know please check your speakers are turned on and all that kind of stuff not realizing that actually it was me <laughs> that was the problem <laughs> So let's just do the basic uh, cast process then. So I'll, I'll, I'll try and get the camera on there so you can see. So first off, what do we do? Well, we identify the accident or unwanted outcome. Obviously, this is not a safety-related outcome, and I'm using this process just to highlight the points. But my unwanted outcome in this case is uh, the attendee is unable to hear my awesome presentation. So that's what I want to avoid. You know, I don't want that to happen. I want everyone to hear it and enjoy it. So... So what are the associated hazards with that then? So obviously, logically, and I'm only focusing on this particular set of hazards because it was about audio and I'm not doing a full system analysis. So I focused on audio not being received by the attendee and I've got to think about the causal scenarios. So there will be some failures and there are likely to be some, in inverted commas, dangerous successes. So I successfully did something that was not right, that was un unsafe. Okay, so what are the high-level safety constraints? Well, this is easy. The awesome presentation audio must be received by the attendee. They must hear what's going on. Otherwise, what's the point of the webinar? So the timeline, let's just do a quick timeline. So uh, I pressed mute <laughs> on the mic. I spoke into the mic. I ran a poll and received results. I did not recognize the feedback. I continued the presentation. I received more feedback. Some people basically typed, hey, there's a problem, we can't hear you. Um, I took action for those specific attendees. As I said, I thought that perhaps they had issues with their equipment. It wasn't to do with me, because obviously I've done a few of these webinars now and, and I know what I'm doing, I'm not an idiot. <laughs> um, so then I continued the presentation. I received some more feedback. And then it's at this point, I thought, mm, there's something not right here. So I took further action and then, well, hey, I recovered the situation by discovering that I'd left it on mute. Awesome. Right, so the next step in the process. Well, we do the hierarchical control structure modeling, which is what I've done over here, which is what I've described to you. Um, and then as part of that control structure modeling, we think about the, we think about the control algorithms and mental models and the various system components. Now, obviously, I know or, or I suspect it was me as the human that was at fault. Um, so let's just focus on that then. So control algorithm and mental model of me or the human. So always thinking, it's always important to think about the STPA uh, control actions and the four different flavors. So I'll just recap those. So there are, there are four types of control actions. There is the control action is provided that causes an unwanted outcome or does not enforce a safety constraint. Then there is not provided, then there is too much or too little, so that's magnitude. And then there is too long or short, which is in duration. So thinking about what I did, I provided things and I didn't provide things. I also provided things too long. So let's have a quick look at that. So. Thinking about the timeline as well, so control algorithm. So I muted the mic, so I provided the action to, provided it and it was too long. Um, I did not unmute the mic, so I did not provide it. Um, my mental model was that I believed that I was unmuted, which was clearly incorrect. And I saw 90% said, yes, we can hear you. So that was my mental model and that's what sort of decided how I was gonna behave. I thought, that everyone could hear me and that I was unmuted. So I carried on as though that was the truth. So control action. So I continued presenting, provided. Mental model. I saw some comments about no sound. So there was a small number of those complaints. So I just presumed, because it was a small number, you know, thinking back, I thought I'd got 90% could hear me. So this is a small number. It's not a widespread issue. So it must be them. 
It must be the individual that has the problems. So I continue presenting, provided. And the Memento model was updated, so I've repeated more widespread complaints. So that's when I decided to diagnose and then solve, solve the issue. So carrying on with the process then, so I've thought about that. Well, now that we understand, you know, my control algorithm and mental model was not appropriate until I got more evidence, more information that convinced me I needed to look further and then recover the situation. So what can we do to sort this problem out? You know, is it just that we've got a stupid human or, or what is the situation? Well, I recommend using STPA to do that, you know, redesign if you like. So what are the aspects of that? Well, I'll just hold the camera, it's a bit difficult. So STPA, so we need to redesign. Obviously there's an issue, we need to change the control structure in some, some shape or form. What should we do? Well, we could fire the human. Oh no, sorry, sorry, not fire the human. We could retrain the human. Well, all that'll do is fundamentally, it won't change the control structure. All it'll do is mean that the control algorithm of the individual um, will be a little bit better tuned. Now, all that'll do is reduce potentially the likelihood of this scenario happening again, but it won't eliminate it. You know, we haven't dealt with ultimately the structural issues with this control structure because the human has loads of control over everything and there is not sufficient feedback for that human to understand they've made a mistake and they need to do something about it. So what about introducing a checklist? Well, so if we introduce the checklist at the top, obviously that's a change to the control structure and that will help a little bit, but ultimately it doesn't change the interactions between me and the software or me and the microphone. It doesn't change that. So it, it makes the system more complicated, but it doesn't eliminate the problem. What about software changes? What about the human machine interface aspects of the software? Or perhaps even including warnings or alerts? And that's focusing on this part of the control structure. So the GoToWebinar software and the display feedback to the human. So perhaps if the human sets the microphone before you start the live broadcast, perhaps uh, an appropriate software control might be well, if you've pressed start broadcast and you've been muted for sort of, well, even a period of time, perhaps that's an incorrect situation and the software should either say something to the human, you know, provide feedback by the display. Hey, you do realize you're muted and you're broadcasting? Is that what you want? You know, maybe that's a good software improvement. I don't know. So, so that's, that's it in a nutshell. I just thought I'd share that, uh, you know, what I learned from a screw up, but using the stamp method just to sort of highlight the principles and highlight the potential value you can get out of it. Um, if you like this video, please leave a like. Uh, if you want to make a comment, I'd love to hear what you think. If you've got any questions, uh, please subscribe. And if you want uh, some more of these videos or you want to be on the future webinars and hopefully the next one will be better, please uh, go to systemsafetywebinar.com send me an email and I'll get you on the next webinar. Thanks very much for your time and I'll see you on the next video. See you, bye-bye.